Today I'm going to uh, be showing you the final stages of a couple of uh, monumental plays I worked on back in 19, 2010. Uh, they were based on the image of this warrior right here, one of them, uh, called Ironhorn. And what we had uh, done is we took waxes of the small Ironhorn and sent it to a uh, place where they blew it up or um, made a, a foam uh, copy of the small one. And uh, here I am at the foundry and we're just readjusting and adjusting the angle of the warrior and this, this is uh, me putting it in the back of the van or truck, which I owned at the time. And this shows you the difference in size between the small head and the big one. I'm at my studio and I'm just uh, mounting it now so I can start working on it. And I've added tape to the moccasins because uh, unlike uh, a lot of things, the uh, foam didn't come out perfect so I had to adjust it and here I am pumping canned foam into uh, the uh, taped foot to bring it out a little bit and here are the feet uh, pretty much uh, with the foam pumped in and here I am taking the tape off and uh, showing you the uh, finished uh, foaming. I am currently working on beads for uh, my uh, life-size Indian. And what I do is I take some clay, as you can see here, and I start rolling it out. I'll just do a... And it takes a little time to learn how to roll like this because uh, it could flip around, you know, as you're rolling like that and you don't want it to do that, so you try to control it, and you learn after time, and I've made literally thousands of these type of rolls for sculptures that I've done over the years. This is probably one of the primary things that uh, you do when you're a sculptor, is you make rolls. I ought to invent a machine that does this. Anyway, so now I want to make beads. Now, this was an idea that I came up with uh, years ago, uh, when I did a sculpture called Summer Wind for a gentleman down in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. He was a life-size Indian. And I was trying to think, how can I make beads and still make them look sculptured? So, I got me a comb, and I cut every other tooth out of it. Now, I take that comb, and I lay it on the clay like that, and I roll it back and forth. I got beads. Now I've got a row of beads. Now, that's just a let regular stitch. That's just a flat stitch. Now, there's what they call a lazy stitch. Now, if I want to make a lazy stitch, which is uh, curved beads like that, that's how I do it. I put a piece of clay underneath so that it has something to bend over, and then you get rows and rows of these, and it looks just like somebody sewed these in a lazy stitch. Six hours worth of work right there. But my hand is so sore from rolling clay. I'm not kidding you. Now I'm talking about life tonight. Please excuse the poor quality of the video, but it was the type of camera I was using. This was clear back when I was first uh, starting to uh, do videos on uh, YouTube. Anyway, this is uh, myself uh, doing the rows of beads, as you can see, and uh, adding them on with the... Uh, a roll of clay underneath them so it uh, gives the effect of uh, the lazy stitch, which I'm trying to achieve. So now you can see uh, okay, how nice that looks. Well, I just got the sleeve to do, and I'm on his uh, arm here. And tomorrow. work here and on that shoulder and uh, the fringe will go on first because I've got to do that before I put the beads on. But uh, it's getting close. Um, okay, you can see the uh, the ermine skin that I attached to the side of his head. Of course, you're going to have hair underneath that and then the, the feather, that hawk feather is on there too. I'm going to 
readjust all the feathers on the top of the head. There's a snowstorm coming in uh, over the weekend, and I'm being forced uh, to uh, get this to Park City a day early, which means I've only got today to work on this. Tomorrow I'll spend crating it up uh, with a little help, and then we'll pack it up in the truck tomorrow night and uh, leave early Friday morning for Park City to leave it off at the uh, Mountain Trails Gallery up there. All right, we got it all crated up. And all I'm doing is supporting it so while it lays down, it uh, won't uh, start sagging backwards. So what I've done is I've put uh, a support from the uh, main frame to the uh, back of the Indian. That'll keep him from falling backwards. The same thing from up there, too. I'll keep the head and then the hand here. It'll just keep everything from starting to, the weight of uh, gravity starts to take over. I've made a minimal crate, but all we're doing is going to be laying it on its back where the two big two-by-fours are back there. And we've braced everything up, and I think we're okay. And we're going to put it in the back of that truck right there. So that's what we're going to do now. You got in there now? It's scary, man. I know, man. It is. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> all right, let's just uh, pull her over. She's not that... Okay, it looks like the only thing we had problems with is the foot. The uh, foam broke away. I was afraid of that. This is how it got here and the otter skin fell off its head. All right, I've uh, traveled about uh, an hour from uh, Park City to Alpine, Utah, which is south of Salt Lake, uh, actually in the uh, uh, Provo Valley here. Um, and I'm going to Adonis de Bronze to see if we can get this clay out and uh, get it repaired. Uh, probably going to have to leave it off here and then they'll repair it while I, I'm back in Montana, which is a little scary for me, but then again, the whole thing has been scary. What we're doing is we're trying to figure out how we're going to get this thing out of the uh, truck. Uh, we want to keep the frame intact, and so uh, they're just trying to figure out how to do that. Okay, they're going to lift it up. good standing up, it really did. I don't even know how that uh, pipe goes into it at all. <laughs> Where it goes after it enters the back. Yeah. Here I am <clears throat> putting final detailing into this clay that was pointed up um, by the foundry itself from the original uh, bronze of uh, my uh, small bronze of uh, Silent Arrow. And uh, I'm just putting the final touches on uh, the piece like uh, adding brass uh, tacks or, you know, in clay. 
on a tie around his legs, and now I'm working on the fringe of the bottom of the shirt to uh, try to get that all done, and just putting textures uh, into the clay. This is a tool that the foundry made to my specifications uh, to uh, make the texture in the uh, wolf skin on the uh, back of the uh, warrior. And here I'm just uh, finishing up the uh, piece and re-sculpting the face of the wolf. Working on the feathers. This was uh, at a foundry in, uh, I think, or a Utah. I can't remember the name of it to save my neck. But a lot of the guys that worked there had uh, worked on my first pieces back in the 70s and 80s, so uh, a lot of them knew me. Again, just adding uh, fingernails to his fingers. He did a great job pointing up this piece. Once again, I'm back to uh, detailing uh, on this last day at the uh, foundry. It, I, I think I spent about three or four days uh, there working on these clays. And uh, these are uh, feathers for the uh, hawk feathers for the uh, iron horn. And uh, just, you know, just basically adding the stitching where I need stitching and and uh, putting texture where I needed to put texture. I had a lot of fun working on these. It wore me out, though. I, you work on two monumental pieces at once, it really wears you out. I'm adding ermine uh, to the uh, spear where he's holding on to it. Well, that's the, uh, that's the fun part. Now I'm cleaning up with uh, lighter fluid, uh, getting all the little nodules out of the way. And uh, now it's time to head home to Montana. And in about, uh, I don't know how long, usually it takes uh, three to four months to cast uh, life sizes. And then I'll probably be back down here to color them at the foundry. Uh, if you would like to uh, learn a little bit more about my instructional DVDs, uh, of which I've got uh, probably a good 50 years of experience packed into these DVDs, um, little tricks, little things you can do uh, in your sculpting, please check out uh, the link in the video description below this video.